Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome back to another Ultimate General Civil War video. So, welcome back, guys. We are, of course, playing as the Confederates once again uh, in our campaign, and we have to actually hold Stone Bridge and Matthews Hill in this particular part. Now, the scary thing is Matthews Hill over here, uh, we don't actually have enough troops to hold it, to be quite honest with you. We could send Kemper back to try and hold it, but I'm not sure he's going to be enough. Um, that being said, we're going to eventually have to deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and actually fast forward here until we get into some combat um, and uh, see if we can't go ahead and hold off the Union long enough to get some reinforcements up there. I'm not sure if the Union has to cross this bridge or if they have other ways of achieving this location up here. We're about to find out. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward here. We're going to let the forces, uh, of course, approach. And as you can see, we already have some Union artillery getting very close here. I'm actually going to try to detach some skirmishers here uh, from Siegfried and from a few other units. And I'm actually going to put the skirmishers right there, uh, as you guys can see, on that point. I'll actually have them run into that position if we can get them to run. No, it looks like we can't. Um, but nonetheless, Siegfried skirmishers are there. Uh, we'll also go ahead and get Buford to deploy some skirmishers too, if he's able. And with these skirmishers, I'm basically just using these guys to harass the enemy artillery. Um, so let's go ahead and continue to shoot fire the, the battle itself. It looks like we're already getting some pretty great shots. Unfortunately, for the skirmishers to get a shot, we have to cross the bridge, which is not something I anticipated. Uh, I'll try to get a few shots off of Buford's and then get the heck out of here, to be honest with you. Uh, it's probably not worth getting shot at by the enemy infantry, so we will fall back. Uh, but I do want to get Siegfried on a, in a position where he's going to be able to go ahead and fire. And of course, our Confederate hero, Isaiah Loveburn, back here, is doing his best. We are going to have to move Kemper over here to stop the 1st Ohio from getting to Matthews Hill. Um, I'm thinking, I didn't want to have to do this, but we are going to have to leave one of these units, uh, or send one of these units, uh, back towards the enemy. The 1st Ohio and the 2nd New York, of course, are going to be crossing the area up here. Uh, the sort of land bridge to try and get into that location, and I want to stop that. It also looks like quite a lot of the enemy units aren't really doing much over here uh, in terms of actually sending forces across the bridge. So we're going to be sending our forces north to cut off the 1st Ohio and the 2nd New York. Uh, we're going to use Kemper to do that, and we're going to move forward. Also take Buford skirmishers and move forward as well. Uh, to assist, and we'll see if we can't stop the enemy. I'm actually hoping that the 2nd Ohio will move forward, but it looks like they're not doing too much. They're kind of staying put, and perhaps the enemy knows that this location is untenable, and they're not going to put all that much into defending this location, in which case, I might send Siegfried over to assist, uh, of course, Buford and uh, Kemper. So let's go ahead and get Buford skirmishers. They're going to start firing here. We're going to be out in the open. I will try to get Kemper into a better location, but that may or may not be possible. Start firing at the 2nd New York and the 1st Ohio as well. Come on, Buford. Get a shot. There we go. At least force them to face us. There we go. Nice flanking shot on the 1st Ohio. Kemper, of course, is getting into position. And Kemper is actually not being led by Kemper himself, I don't believe. Um by a subordinate. I could be wrong. That actually could be Edmund Kemper, but we'll go ahead and get close here on the 2nd New York. Yeah, I'm actually going to focus fire with Buford skirmishers just on the 1st Ohio. We've got this nice little clump of trees that I think are going to serve us pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and try to open fire on the 2nd New York, and we will see what happens. Here we go, guys. We are going to get very, very close. And Kemper, a nice little volley there on the 2nd New York, and at least we've sort of stalled these guys temporarily while we figure out what to do. Um, now, as far as I can see here, over at Stone Bridge, the 2nd Ohio is actually taking some major losses, and we might be able to go ahead and stop them in their place. In fact, I even almost want to take Buford and send him up north to assist his skirmishers, but I think right now this is going to be sufficient. Although, as you can see, we got some Union cavalry approaching. That's going to make our job a lot harder, and I, yeah, I'm definitely going to be moving Buford forward here into these woods. I think you guys can see it, and B's brigade is rushing to cover our left. So let's see how many men B is going to send, and we will, of course, be able to determine what we're going to do uh, to assist maybe at Matthews Hill here. We're going to take Imboden and we're going to move him over here as quickly as possible. And it looks like we might be getting some infantry too. Yes, we are, guys. We're getting Bartow, B, Pelham, a lot of very useful units. And I think holding off the enemy the amount of time we did was sufficient to get some reinforcements here. At least that's what I'm hoping. It looks like the Union scouts are actually attacking Kemper, which is surprising. There's not many of them. They have routed here. 
and uh, we're going to go ahead and allow them to do that. I'm going to have Kemper keep focusing on the second New York here. And we'll bring Buford in from the flank to try and open fire on the second New York as well. As you can see, they're actually pretty badly damaged. I'm thinking with continuous fire, we can actually completely break this unit. Go ahead and hit them on their left flank. Kemper's still firing from the center here, getting some great volleys, and now we have them in a sort of conical firing position, which is going to make it very easy for us to break this unit. Uh, as you can see, we got one unit in front, sort of shooting at the front. The next unit is firing at their flanks. I think this is going to be enough to really hurt them. And here we go. The second New York is in trouble. However, problem here is the first Ohio is starting to move towards Matthews Hill. That being said, we've got a lot of reinforcements here. I actually want to set them up in such a way, sort of like this, you guys can see, where they can see down the hill and get some downhill shots. As you guys know, downhill shots are much, much more effective uh, than firing uphill or even firing on a level plane. So I think this is going to be helpful. Let's see if Buford, come on Buford. We could actually probably charge the second New York here and manage to get uh, enough damage to break them, but I think we want to try and play it safe here and just go ahead and continue firing. Kemper's actually taken a beating, but not too much. 31 men dead on uh, Buford's side and 124 men dead on Kemper. And there goes the second New York breaking away. Uh, I think we could probably follow the first Ohio over here. Maybe try to hit them from the back. It looks like Hampton's Brigade and General Beauregard have also arrived to help. And I'm not sure what we're going to do with them. Right now, it looks like we have a pretty good defense going on up here. We might send them up, send them up there as well. Or uh, we might go ahead and take General Beauregard and just use him to sort of increase the morale of the men over here. I think that might not be such a bad idea. That is if Beauregard doesn't get any infantry uh, to follow him into battle, which, which may actually happen. Porter's Brigade. Now, this is a Union Brigade coming from the north. So now we know that we need to actually send some of these units to defend the north here. We'll try to put them in a better position with Bartow. Uh, we'll keep B going into the same area he was going before. And it looks like, yeah, sure enough, uh, Beauregard is going to be followed by Hampton's Legion. Uh, not too many infantry units in this Legion, about 1135, but Hampton himself is an incredible, absolutely incredible general. Uh, and I think he's going to help big time. Look at this. The second Ohio is back for more. And this time they're going even into an even deadlier position than before. Returning to where you can see all these Federals down. It looks like they want some more of this action. It looks like they want to see what happens if they face us head on. So here we go. Of course, we got the first Ohio approaching. I'm going to let them get into B's line of sight. And I'm also going to set up Imbedin right here. Uh, we'll take... Pelham, which is another artillery officer, and set him up in the north for that Union attack. It looks like Porter is arriving, and as you can see, Porter's brigade has a lot of men in it. Uh, nearly 3,000 men are making up Porter's brigade. So here we go, Imidin firing on the first Ohio. I might actually, I'm actually going to focus on Porter, I have to say. There's just so many enemies, uh, I think it's going to be important. And it looks like General McDowell coming with Burnside is also going to assist. Yeah, we definitely need to go ahead and focus our fire at the larger units. Now, B just got a devastating shot on the first Ohio. We will fire once with our artillery. I'm hoping we can get some canister shot, but sure enough, wow, the first Ohio flanked us right away. Now, we've got Kemper coming up on their flank, and I think Kemper can pretty much break them in half, uh, but we're gonna have to see whether or not that's the case. We'll also send these supplies up the hill, but let's see if Kemper can go ahead. We've got the, them trapped now. All I'm really worried about at this point is crossfire. Uh, but I'm hoping that the actual distance in turn, <clears throat> the actual topography, I should say, is going to stop our men from accidentally shooting each other uh, in any real sense of the word. So here we go. We're going to get the first Ohio from two different angles. Look at this. One volley. We've got Kemper behind. He's going to get that second volley into the flank. And actually, we could charge with Kemper, but I don't think we need to. As you can see, the first Ohio is already routing. We do have some cavalry scouts approaching here from the north, but I think Bartow can hold them. And we might use Kemper just to go ahead and displace the 1st Ohio or to support our units in the north. Let's see how Hampton's Legion's doing. Doing pretty good. And Keyes Brigade past the river and is trying to encircle us. So Keyes is actually also approaching this area. We've got to be careful because we've got Isaiah Loveburn over here, and he is actually responsible for defending this river area. Now with Keyes, he actually might have enough men to be able to break our spirit in this location. 
I think I'm going to focus mostly on just firing at Keys. I won't focus so much on the second Ohio. There's more men in Keys Braid, and I think that that's going to be important to a victory. Let's see how Imboden's doing here. He's finally got himself back up on his feet. But in the meantime, we'll take Kemper. And we'll actually move Kemper over here uh, back to Isaiah Loveburn where he was before because I think we've got enough men. I hope we've got enough men to hold off the enemy up north. Franklin and Wilcox's brigades press our flank. And here we go. More attacks on Matthews Hill. It's going to be tough to stop this, guys. We're going to do everything we can. So let's move Hampton's Legion up here. And, of course, we've got Beauregard watching the men in this location to make sure they don't falter. I want to see if Keyes is going to try to make it across here, but he might just stay put and allow us to deal with the other part of the Union Army. We're going to have to wait and see, guys. All right, we can see the second U.S. has actually started running out of ammo. So as far as I can see, their artillery is pretty much uh, unable to do much. But Keyes also isn't doing much. It kind of worries me. I think he's going to prepare for an assault, uh, some sort of massive attack. We'll have to see. I'm even considering making some skirmisher units out of Bartow, just so that we can deal with the enemy skirmishers. Uh, and we are heavily outnumbered during this battle, guys. So I think we're going to take Bartow skirmishers, try to fire over here at these skirmishers. We've got some pretty good uh, actual cover in this area, but I think Imboden is going to help big time. I want to keep Imboden behind the men over here. Uh, obviously, keeping artillery behind the infantry is not always the best idea, but I think they're far enough away from the infantry. There's not going to be any conflicting shots or anything like that especially since Pelham is getting smashed. So let's actually get Hampton's Legion to take position over here on Matthews Hill, uh, which actually seems to be guard seems to be sort of a large farm area, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we'll go there, we'll do that. I'm almost thinking Kemper should return now uh, to defend Matthews Hill. There's so many Union men uh, approaching, I think we probably need to. So that's what we're going to do. Look at this, my friends, a massive amount of enemy units. The skirmishers almost seem to have no fear just because there's so many Union men they're just able to do whatever the heck they want. So we definitely want to take Hampton's Legion. We're putting them there. And I'm actually very happy that we're bringing back Kemper to try and help defend this area. We can see the enemy quarter is already attacking. Uh, I hope that Hampton's Legion can get into this location quickly. So let's go ahead and double quick into this position. Hopefully we can stop this massive charge by the Union. Even B is noticed at this point. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't try and get B over here on this flank. Unfortunately, Bartow's skirmishers have routed, and it looks like Bartow may be next, especially if Porter gets his way here. I'm um, hoping that the second line of defense is going to help us big time. We definitely need these cannons working and firing very, very quickly, and they seem to be taking their sweet time. There we go, some decent shell shot, but not before Imbidin gets flanked and flees. Expected that, of course, with Howard over here. We might need to almost pull back with the rest of our army uh, to deal with this situation. Doesn't look like the enemy is going to move forward here on the bridge, but only time will really tell. So let's go ahead and move back over here to this area, and let's hope that we have enough men to hold off this massive attack. Go ahead and fire at Porter. No, don't, don't charge B. We're going to stop B from charging. We'll just put him right here. Keep on firing at Porter. And Sherman's brigade with two artillery batteries has been spotted approaching here. That's going to be a serious problem for our men, of course. Um, and all this artillery is eventually going to culminate in some sort of issue for us. Let's take a look over here. It looks like Buford, which I totally forgot about, has actually managed to push back the second New York. Also some skirmisher divisions, which is definitely going to help us. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep opening fire here on the skirmishers. And maybe we'll bring his brigade over here to assist with this particular problem. Of course, those skirmishers are going to be a pain for now, but we'll open fire once more. See if we can't break them with a nice volley. Looks like they're pretty well hidden. I'm going to try to charge them, which I don't recommend. I definitely don't recommend charging a skirmisher brigade. They can run a lot faster than you can, and as you can see, that's exactly what they're going to do. But we are trying to get over here anyway, so we're going to move forward, and here we go, guys. It has begun. A massive attack over here. We are getting Kemper into position. He's arrived just at the right time, and now we've got some massive bayonet combat here in this center. Uh, those Federals are charging big time. We're going to see if B can't go ahead and fire at Porter, uh, but actually B's rear is flanked. There's a lot of enemies attacking here, and they've got that sickle formation that really crushes uh, most, most armies uh, in this type of warfare. So we definitely want to get Kemper to face Howard. I'm going to also bring Bartow skirmishers to try and harass the enemy here on, uh, on 
the right side. We did manage to route Wilcox, but as you can see, Barto is running desperate to escape, and the enemy continues to move forward. So let's hope Imbedin can get some decent shots. And at the same time, get Kemper over here. Definitely looks like B is looking pretty shaky here. He might be the next to run. We should at least try to hold one of these locations, guys. Either Stone Bridge or Matthews Hill. I'm surprised that Bartos' brigade actually ran. It looks like Buford is also running here. A lot of our brigades can't take the heat here, and they are breaking quickly. Um, might even be a better idea to just fall back and uh, try and hold the river position, but we're going to have to wait and see how that goes. So let me try to fire on Howard. As you can see, Hampton's uh, Legion is holding sort of the center here, and the Union has secured Matthews Hill. That's a serious issue, of course. Uh, we'll do everything we can, but I'm not really sure there's much to be done. Uh, and Brigadier General B is killed. Losing at Brigadier General is a huge loss. Uh, of course, now that they've taken out this Brigadier General, we definitely find ourselves in a difficult position, to say the least. I uh, hope Kemper can fire pretty quickly here. His morale is actually increasing, and I think it's because of the height of the hill here. But let's see if he can get a decent volley down on Howard. Pretty nice volley. Nonetheless, most of our guys are now fighting uphill, and as you can know, fighting uphill, as I've said many times before, is in general a losing battle. Uh, nonetheless, we are going to try to hit the enemy on their left flank here, and we're going to try to hold this position at least until the end of the turn. Now, it looks like some skirmishers are actually attacking Siegfried's men, but we've actually got Keys over here uh, managing to move forward. We've got also Sherman managing to maybe move forward, but they seem to be kind of confused as to what to do, which is good for us. They're not crossing the bridge, which is probably a good idea. Uh, but it looks like Keys, oh no, Keys may be trying to cross the bridge here, guys. Let's try and focus all of our fire here on them. Bring Buford skirmishers in. I hope Siegfried can get a good attack. If not, we've just lost two very important locations during this battle. Come on, old boys. Get a good shot with Law here. And it looks like we got some shell shot down on Keys. I hope that's going to help big time. We're still holding the location. As long as we can hold it until the end of the time period, I think that's going to be pretty helpful. But as you can see, look at that. Those skirmishers are doing a lot of damage. Uh, we'll try to use Buford to hit the first Ohio here. Overall, though, I think we're going to have to fall back. It's going to be the best thing to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and fall back into the woods. Do the same, and we have withdrawn to Henry Hill, guys. So now we've got a second point of uh, withdrawal. Seems that the enemy outnumbers us. We must retreat and reorganize our forces. Uh, so we're going to move everybody here to Henry Hill. I hope we can move everybody. We've got General Jackson with fresh troops to assist us, but against such large Union brigades, it's going to be very, very tough to stop them. Do not lose this hill or our flank will collapse and we'll be forced to withdraw to Richmond. Um, so as you can see, we're going to go ahead, we're going to grab our boys and move them up to Henry's Hill as quickly as we can. Um, man, it looks like we managed to push Keys back. Let's go ahead and as quickly as we can retreat over here with the rest of our men. If they're able to escape, we're going to keep some skirmishers behind to basically uh, hold the enemy at bay. I'm going to take Beauregard and the rest of these men and withdraw to Henry Hill as well. And it looks like many of our men managed to escape. I think this is actually not such a bad thing, guys. Uh, if we can manage to get all of our men over there to the other side of Henry's Hill, we're going to be in a pretty good position to defend. So let's go ahead and get Beauregard. At this point, we'll be able to just defend one location. We don't have to split our forces. We can actually keep them in multiple locations, and that is going to do nothing but help us. So let's see what happens, of course, and continue moving more forces forward uh, to try and hold this position. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, we're getting over here with the general units. Buford skirmishers are trying to hold back the enemy skirmishers. I especially want to get Isaiah Loveburn in this tree cover quickly. Because those skirmishers could not only capture our supplies, which they just did, uh, but they could also cause serious damage to our generals. So let's open fire here. And Williams has surrendered. That's our supply wagon. See how the rest of our men are doing. You can see Hampton's legions trying to put up a fight. So is B. But we, we, we actually need them over here desperately. Uh, so let's get them over here. If we can hold up on this side of the river, we're going to be doing very well. Buford, unfortunately, is completely trapped. And I think he might actually end up having to retreat completely or maybe even surrender. 
with this amount of enemies moving forward. Just look at that, guys. So many Union forces moving forward here. It's going to be a tough fight. I think our best bet is to go ahead and get in these woods and try and hold the enemy off for as long as possible. So we're going to set up in the woods, of course. We'll put some skirmishers in town, make it a little more difficult for the enemy. But really, I think the main goal is going to be to use cover here uh, to stop the enemy advance. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, and go take a look at our other uh, Ultimate General Civil War videos, which you can find in our playlists. Uh, really appreciate it, guys. And uh, don't forget to also provide some tactical advice, if you have any, uh, in the comments down below. Thank you again. Take care. And have an awesome, awesome day.